Hello and welcome to this video in the IBM Cloud Foundation Skill Series. In this video we'll start to talk a bit about databases and how you can use certain databases on the IBM Cloud. So there'll be a few videos in this section and I'll try and get as hands-on as possible in building and showing you how to use some of the more popular um, databases which are available. Now if you're not sure what a database is, well um, at a very high level it would be I would describe it as a place where you can store and query data um, so that it's accessible to applications. So if you're creating an application and that application either creates or needs to use data of some kind, um, then you'll probably need to use some kind of database. And the good news is that creating and using databases in the IBM Cloud is actually pretty straightforward. Now there's several types of database out there and they can generally be, be described under these four headings. So first we have relational databases and these are databases which have data schemas, um, or to put it another way, they have tables that are relational where integrity is enforced um, through primary keys and foreign keys, uh, and you set these up when you design them. So relational databases are sometimes also called SQL databases because you use a form um, of structured query language or SQL to query them. So with relational databases, you tend to go through degrees of normalization um, and the data is highly structured and you tend to find that changing the scheme or structure of these or to add an extra table or even a field is a long-winded affair uh, that will normally go through a number of levels of change control to make sure that it doesn't actually affect anything. So when you're writing applications against these types of databases you really have to understand how the data is modelled and uh, you, you, um, there's also a bit of an art in designing a relational database so that it remains fast. So these types of relational databases um, tend to be used where you need fast access to specific rows of data uh, among millions of rows. And uh, the big hitters in the field are IBM's DB2, uh, MySQL or MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server. So you'll find DB2, MySQL and PostgreSQL available as services on IBM Cloud, but you can still use both Oracle and SQL Server on the cloud um, but you'll need to uh, build your own deployment, and I'll talk about that later in this video. So then we have non-relational databases, and they tend to be referred to as NoSQL databases because they don't have that rigid structure to them. And there are actually a few types of NoSQL databases. So first you might have document databases, and these are unstructured databases, meaning they don't conform to a structure, i.e. there's no schema. So where in a relational database you might find a transaction generating several records across different tables, in a document database, all of the data from the transaction just gets stored in a single document, which is in JavaScript object notation format, which you might also better known as JSON. Uh, you can also change the structure of the JSON document. So one may have uh, 10 attributes, another may have 15 attributes, another might just have one, which is a completely different attribute. So document databases are useful where the data structures change frequently. So this can be referred to as semi-structured, where there is a loose structuring of the data, or unstructured, where there's no structure at all. So because the structure can change with each record or document, there's a reduction uh, in the management overhead for the database in terms of structure changes. But the cost of this is that the application code then needs to check for valid data in a more vigorous way. Um, but it does mean that the developer can go on um, to code an application without first having to spend a lot of time designing and setting up the data structure. Document databases can also structure really efficiently and be extremely fast um, with low latency response times. So data is queried against views of the data, which are constantly updated as new records are added. And because all the data is in, run, uh, is in a single record, so unlike an RDBMS system, there's no need to execute cross-table joins, which can be really expensive and time-consuming. The most popular document databases on the IBM Cloud are Mo uh, Cloud and MongoDB and RethinkDB. So we then have key value stores, and uh, these are typically incredibly fast stores which simply hold a record identifier, which is the key, uh, and then a value or array of values against that key. They're often described as in-memory databases, but they uh, can also use disk storage. So again, these tend to be unstructured, so each key can hold a completely unique record structure. Um, typical use cases for key value stores are uh, for holding session state information for user sessions on a website, um, as well as for things like shopping baskets on websites where users add items to their basket. So again, key value stores um, scale really efficiently and they can handle millions of records. 
um, popular key value stores on the IBM Cloud, Redis and uh, ECTD. The other type of database you can use on the uh, IBM Cloud isn't really a database at all. It's, uh, or at least there's, uh, there's no database structure for you to worry about. So I'd call this databaseless. Uh, so this is the SQL query service. Uh, and with this, you can query certain types of documents using structured query language. So for example, you can take a CSV file and rather than import that into a relational database, uh, the SQL query service simply bypasses that step and you can just query the document. So again, there'll be a video on this uh, later in the series. So in the IBM Cloud, you can create databases on either your own provisioned infrastructure or as a service, and it depends on your use case as to which you would normally use. If you choose to run your database on a virtual machine or, or bare metal server, then it will normally be because you need to run a database which isn't offered as a service. So for example, Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, or it could be where you need root or admin rights over the database instance, or where you need to have a greater degree of isolation, and this could be for uh, performance or security reasons. So to enlarge slightly on those requirements, um, IBM Cloud currently doesn't offer all databases as a service, and Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server are examples. However, if your application demands the use of such databases, then you can bring your own licenses to the cloud and create your in own instances of either bare metal servers or virtual machines. In the case of Oracle in particular, this would probably be on a bare metal server uh, due to Oracle's licensing conditions. There are also some instances where administrators need root or administrator rights uh, to the database and this is normally where they want to change memory parameters or otherwise enable functionality uh, which has a wider effect on the infrastructure uh, on which the database instance runs. So when using a database as a service access to root or administrator accounts is normally unavailable and this is because a number of instances are running on the same infrastructure. Uh, and in providing higher level rights uh, that could then mean that changes affect other instances on the hardware or inadvertently grant access to other instances' data, which is why such uh, rights are restricted and not given. So if there's a need for such rights, then consider building your own dedicated instance on a virtual machine or bare metal server. Similarly, if your application or data demands isolation from other instances, and this may be for security or performance reasons, then consider building your own instance on a dedicated virtual machine instance or a bare metal server. So in some cases, databases can be installed as part of the virtual machine build. Uh, MySQL is a good example here. Or otherwise, you can bring your own licenses and create your own installation. Note that this means that you need to manage the database, and this includes things like implementing high availability, um, using your own backup recovery and monitoring tools, and managing other aspects as, um, such as maintenance, patches, and upgrades. The other way to create a database in the IBM Cloud is provision a database as a service from the catalog. IBM offers a number of different databases in the catalogue and in most cases there's no need to spec out hardware, although there are a few exceptions, uh, but you don't uh, actually have to build hardware or maintain it or install your own database software. So these services are simple to connect to applications and uh, they may come with, uh, full, and they, well, actually a lot of them come with fully documented APIs as well. So in many cases high availability is taken care of, but in some you'll need to specify a need for HA. Uh, but again, this is then built for you, so obviously you pay for what you use. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this introduction to databases on IBM Cloud. So in the next few videos, we'll get a better look at the DB2 service, uh, which is a relational database. Uh, we'll look at Cloudant, which is a NoSQL or document database. And we'll also take a look at the uh, SQL query service, which is essentially databaseless. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.